Hello guys, here Alex Asmacher again for We Talk UAV. Today we'll be talking about the 10 facts you probably don't know about the Phantom 4 Pro. Now let's go inside. The Phantom 4 Pro camera and the X4S from the Inspire 2 are essentially the same camera. Now a lot has been talked why you should be buying an Inspire 2 with the X4S camera if for half the price you can have the Phantom 4 Pro with the same camera which has the same ISO range, even the same sensor, the same resolution, among other stuff. Now the only difference between those two cameras is that the X4S is capable of turning 360 degrees where the Phantom 4 Pro camera cannot. No third-party apps on the Plus, the Phantom 4 Pro Plus version with the built-in screen display. So you won't be able to run Autopilot or Litchi with this controller. Although it wouldn't be a surprise if DJI will include this third-party apps in a future update or something like that. The VPS velocity range has been improved too. Probably a software improvement as we can't visually see any difference with the Phantom 4 externally on any hardware issues. So the velocity range of the Phantom 4 was at 36 km per hour and the Phantom 4 Pro now is able to do it at 50 km per hour. Really nice improvement the Phantom 4 Pro time lapse. You can now shoot a time lapse with a minimum interval between photos of 2 seconds. On previous models like the Phantom 4 the minimum interval was 10 seconds. So now we don't have to wait forever to create those amazing time lapses. The infrared 3D TOF sensors, those lateral sensors, only work in beginner and in tripod mode. So don't really expect them to save your drone if you fly sideways to a wall. However, a set front and back sensors do work in any mode. There is quite a bit of improvement in terms of hovering precision with VPS too. The vertical precision has been maintained at 0.1 meters for both Phantom 4 and Phantom 4 Pro in terms of precision of hovering precision, but horizontally the Phantom 4 was at 0.5 meters and the Phantom 4 Pro now is at 0.3 meter precision, which is really awesome. AEB or auto exposure bracketing, it can do up to 7 bracketed frames now where it could only do 5 in its previous version. So this is something also really nice. The 3D TOF or infrared sensors, these lateral sensors, according to our experience, we've had some problems with transparent objects or walls like crystal or glass and also with some small sized uh, object. So be careful with that. We've also read in the forums that some people had problems with that. The old well-known landing RTH logic. Now I've tried to record this a couple of times but I get messed up. Let me read it straight. RTH based on vision information is added. The aircraft will record the information of the ground when ascending at a height of 7 meters and use it for precision landing during RTH. When the aircraft is landing automatically, the aircraft will detect whether two sides of the landing positions are flat. If not, the aircraft will stop landing and hover. Yeah, now that is right. One tip for keeping your battery healthy and long-term self-storage battery is to keep it in a water-free environment and you should always set an auto discharging time. This will keep it healthy and of course if you are not using your drone it should be at least charged and discharged once every three months. Well guys thank you very much for watching this video I really hope you liked it. Leave a like, a comment if you have anything to say, subscribe if you're not yet and I really hope you learned some of the facts that you didn't know. Always keep calm and talk UAV.